This video is created by the Standards and Interoperability Lab, Asia. This session, we will be discussing about CRUD operations in FIRE. The presentation will be as follows. A quick recap on FIRE resources, we will be using and working on it. Thus, we need to be reoriented about it. A review on FIRE exchanging data. Just a quick review on the methodology available on how FIRE resources can be exchanged. Overview of REST API, one of FIRE exchanging data methodology which follows RESTful design, the CRUD operations. CRUD operations, the create, read, update and delete operations of FIRE resources. Let's start with a quick recap on FIRE resources. What are these fire resources? Fire resources is the building blocks of fire. A resource is a container of information which represents something in real world. Reading one resource can reveal a resource with links to other resources. There are roughly 160 fire resources available and can be checked in the fire specification. It can be represented in multiple formats like JSON, XML, Turtle. Most of the resources can be found in the resource list at www.hl7.org slash fireresourcelist.html. To see specifications of a specific resource, you may click the resource name which is a link. It will give you details of the resource. In this example, let's see the patient resource. Specification of the patient resource includes scope and usage, the tree structure of the resource content, terminology bindings, constraints, resource SID, linking other resources and so on, until the search parameters. In the resource content, you may choose the tab of your preferred format to see the structure in the chosen format, JSON. XML or Turtle. You can also check the UML of the resource and the R3 diff tab to check the changes from R3 to current version which is R4. That's our recap on resources. Next we will review FIRE methodologies in exchanging data. Fire Exchange Module is designed as an interface specification. It specifies the content of the data exchanged between healthcare applications, and how the exchange is implemented and managed. The following are the methods in exchanging data or resources between different healthcare applications or system. RESTful API is a client, server API, for web-based application designed to follow the principles of RESTful design which includes creation, reading, updating and deleting operations along with searching and executing, operations, support. Exchange of routed messages is also supported which can be implemented on the RESTful API or using some other messaging technology. This will help on how to exchange content based on their own architectural and deployment considerations. It uses a message bundle which contains message header resource to handle the message event and content followed by other resources. The specification also defines a document-based exchange framework, where content to be exchanged is wrapped by a composition resource that provides the context of the content, and that has a fixed presentation for a human reader. Another exchange framework is using FIRE in a framework that may be developed by the implementers to move resources as service like in a service oriented architecture. Resources in a service oriented implementation can serve, either as a payload parameter, specifying information flowing into or out of a service, or in a behavioral sense, using FIRE APIs as the invocation mechanism for engaging a service. Another way to use the resources defined by FIRE is to store them in a database where different applications or modules transact with it as part of their implementation. This is a new area being considered. Each of these approaches can be used to exchange information in between systems or applications. 
different systems or applications may opt to have other methods in exchanging resources. But FIRE makes it easy for us with this common methods described or standardized by FIRE. At this point, we will look into one of the methodology described above, the RESTful API. So, what is REST? REST is an acronym for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural style for distributed hypermedia systems. Data and functionality are considered resources and are accessed using uniform resource identifiers. Resource is the key abstraction of information in REST. It uses a resource identifier for resources involved in an interaction. A truly RESTful API looks like a hypertext and is a simultaneous presentation of information and controls. The resources are acted upon by using a set of simple, well-defined operations. The clients and servers exchange representations of resources by using a standardized interface and protocol, typically HTTP. Resources are decoupled from their representation so that their content can be accessed in a variety of formats, such as HTML, XML, plain text, PDF, JPEG, JSON, and others. We use HTTP protocols to support create, read, update and delete operations. Before proceeding to the CRUD operations on FIRE resources, you may want to use any one of these testing tools for trying out the CRUD operations on FIRE resources. CURL, a tool which can be used to execute HTTP requests from the command line. Boseman a free GUI-based testing user interface for executing REST requests. Fire Client, an interface to a Fire Server. Sil Asia had set up a Hoppy Fire Server instance and you can access it at 172.104.170.172.88 slash fire server The testing tools are ready, let's proceed to the CRUD operations. Fire is based on resources, and as mentioned a while ago, it is the building blocks of Fire that can be exchanged. A URL identifies the resource and specifies where it can be accessed from. If the URL will be accessed via the Fire RESTful API, it will be in this format. Base slash resource type slash ID. Base is the service base URL which is the address where all of the resources defined by the interface are found. It takes the form, HTTP or HTTPS colon slash slash server with optional path. In the SIL Asia Fire Server client setup, the base URL is 172.104.170.172.88 slash seala fire server slash fire. Resource instances are represented as either XML, JSON or RDF. The correct MIME type that should be used by clients and servers are for XML, application slash fire plus XML. For JSON, application slash fire plus JSON. For RDF, application slash fire plus turtle where only the turtle format is supported. Here is an example of the resource template represented as fire object in JSON. Examples in XML and turtle can be seen in the resource content part of the specification. In our further instructions, examples and commands, we will be using the JSON format. For resource interactions, Fire already provides a REST API with a rich but simple set of interactions. In this session, we will only look at the first four operations in manipulating the resources which is the CRUD operations. The interactions are defined as verb space base slash type slash ID. The first operation will be create with verb post. For example we would like to create a resource instance for a patient with the following representation in JSON. To create a resource, we send an HTTP POST request to the resource type's respective endpoint.
then we have the JSON body or content of our request. If the creation of the resource is successful, it will contain HTTP code 201 as indicator which also includes a location header which indicates where the resource can be fetched in subsequent requests. For some reasons, servers may need to return an error. Fire content related errors should be returned using an appropriate HTTP status code like HTTP 422 unprocessable entity. This are screenshots for different testing applications as mentioned a while ago. Next, reading or viewing current contents of a resource, we send an HTTP GET request to the resource type's respective endpoint. Our service base URL will be the Sail Asia server with patients as the resource. Then the ID of the resource and since we want to view. The response to a successful GET request is 200 OK HTTP status code with the contents or elements of the resource. Unknown resources and deleted resources are treated differently on the read. A GET for a deleted resource returns a 410 status code, whereas a GET for an unknown resource returns 404. We can also read or view a specific version of resource instance by adding slash underscore history slash version ID on the HTTP request. This are screenshots for different testing applications as mentioned a while ago. In updating the current contents of a resource, we send an HTTP put request to the resource type's respective endpoint. The update interaction creates a new current version for an existing resource or creates an initial version if no resource already exists for the given ID. The request body shall be a resource with an ID element that has an identical value to the ID in the URL. If no ID element is provided, or the ID disagrees with the ID in the URL, the server shall respond with an HTTP 400 error code, and should provide an operation outcome identifying the issue. If the interaction is successful, the server shall return either a 200 OK HTTP status code or if the resource was updated or a 201 created status code or if the resource was created or brought back to life, recreated. Server may reject updates and may return these common HTTP status codes returned on fire related errors. 400 bad request, resource could not be parsed or failed basic fire validation rules, or multiple matches were found for conditional criteria. 401 not authorized. Authorization is required for the interaction that was attempted. 404 not found, resource type not supported, or not a fire endpoint. 405 method not allowed, the resource did not exist prior to the update, and the server does not allow client defined IDs. 409 412, version conflict management. 422 unprocessable entity. The proposed resource violated applicable fire profiles or server business rules. This are screenshots for different testing applications as mentioned a while ago.
To delete a resource, send an HTTP delete request to the resource type's respective endpoint. It uses a logical delete, meaning the resource is marked as deleted and it will no longer appear in search results and it may be undeleted by updating it again. Upon successful deletion, or if the resource does not exist at all, the server should return either a 200 OK if the response contains a payload, or a 200 for no content with no response payload, or a 200 to accept it if the server wishes to be non-committal about the outcome of the delete. If the server refuses to delete resources of that type as a blanket policy, then it should return the 405 method not allowed status code. If the server refuses to delete a resource because of reasons specific to that resource, such as referential integrity, it should return the 409 conflict status code. Note that the servers may choose to enforce business rules regarding deletion of resources that are being referenced by other resources, but they also may not do so. These are screenshots for different testing applications as mentioned a while ago. That's CRUD operations for fire resources. Thank you very much. If you have questions, you may email us at hata at sil-asia.org or fill at sil